Well, welcome everyone, Wesley family, to our uh, online worship this morning, our traditional service. If you are watching this in premiere, it's nine o'clock, and so if you were expecting the uh, contemporary service at this time, uh, we've had to make a change. Uh, we've had, uh, in uh, uh, consideration of our neighbors here at the church, our outdoor worship will be at nine o'clock, or I'm sorry, our outdoor worship will be at 11 o'clock. Uh, that'll be on Facebook Live as well at 11, and our traditional service will be now as you're seeing it at nine o'clock. And so we want to welcome you, uh, those of you who are on Facebook, those of you who are on YouTube, uh, those of you who are on Zoom. Uh, we'd like to ask those of you, as always, who are on uh, Facebook and YouTube to uh, interact uh, in the comments, uh, like the video, comment, interact with each other in the comments. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to our channel. That will help us out a lot. We want you to stay informed, and so uh, you can get information at our website at wesleyonline.org. You can also give through our website at wesleyonline.org slash give. Uh, sign up for our weekly emails. Actually, we send out two emails a week, one on Monday and then one on Friday. Monday has some news and announcements and scheduling. Uh, Friday has some uh, worship materials for you. And so if you're not getting those emails, uh, send an email to Mary Jo, and her email address is wesley at wesleyonline.org. So we're glad you're here. Uh, let us pray. Eternal God, your Son, Jesus Christ, now exalted as Lord of all, pours out his gifts on the church. Grant us that in unity, which the Spirit gives, keep us in the bond of peace and bring all creation to worship before your throne. For you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So 
and welcome for another children's sermon. I have Elise with me this morning because we're going to talk about being generous. So, Elise, what do you think it means to be generous? Um, like sharing. Sharing, okay. Uh, give me an example of something you might be generous with sharing. Um, like if you are like playing a game and like somebody else wins and there's like a prize, you could share it. Oh, good. Yeah, so maybe the prize is that the other team gets cookies or something, right? And so you get a cookie and the other team didn't, so maybe you could share your cookie with someone else, right? Okay, so that's an example of being generous. When I read the scripture for today, I thought about something and it made me think of another time that Elise was generous. And it also um, has gotten me to think about something that I should have done a long time ago. And... Donate this hair. <laughs> okay, so several months ago, Elise had really long hair and um, her grandma had a birthday. So this was back in December. Her grandma had a birthday. And she always asked that instead of a birthday gift that we find a charity um, that we feel strongly about and that we make a donation to them. So Elise was ready to get her hair cut and we thought what better way than to get her hair cut and she can give her hair to someone who needs it as well as make a monetary donation to that organization. So why are you giving your hair to that, Elise? So, um, so they'll find different tones of hair that is this color of hair and they'll make weights for people who did like chemo and stuff. Right, so kids or adults that maybe have lost their hair for some reason, it might be from cancer, it might be from a disease called alopecia. Chemo. Right, from can they have to get chemo from having cancer and they might lose their hair. And having hair, especially if you're a little girl, is just something that is fun and you get to you curl it, it and you can braid it. it. And if you don't have hair, people might, um, you might feel self-conscious and people might make fun of you. And so this will provide them the opportunity to have a hair, uh, to have a wig with actual hair and they can just feel a little bit more normal. So Elise had a lot of something that she didn't need all of. And so she decided since she had a lot of something that she could take a little bit of it and give it to somebody. And now I only have this much hair. To give it to somebody who needed it. So that's an example of her being generous. And the scripture today comes from Acts chapter four. And the verse I wanna read is Acts chapter four, verse 34. And it says, there were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned lands or houses and sold them, brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone as he had need. So in that time, people would um, sell things, and when they would sell it, instead of keeping all the money for themselves, they give it to the apostles, and the apostles were aware of people who might have some needs. It might be, you know, needs for some items or some money or whatever that might be, and it, as the apostles became aware of where the needs were, they were able to t use that money to help other people. So it's something that's important for us to think about that it doesn't even, it doesn't have to be money. It can be things like this, or it can just be like Elise mentioned, sharing your cookies or just sharing something that you might have a lot of and that somebody might not have any of and you could help them out by being generous and, and sharing what you have with them. Taking something you have a lot of and giving a little to someone else so that they um, can be blessed too. So God asks us to take the things that we're blessed with because he blesses us, us with so many things and to share a little bit with other people. And then those people can share with other people and those people can share with other people and, and the love just spreads. So that's what um, we're asked to do as Christians. And it's my challenge to you this week that you can think of some ways that you can be generous. Let's pray. Dear God, Dear God, thank you, thank you for blessing me, for blessing me with so many things. With so many things. Help me, help me to share those blessings, to share those blessings with others. With others. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us this week and we'll see you again next week. Bye. Bye. Our scripture reading is from Acts chapter 4, verses 32 to 37. 
Listen to the word of God. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, today we are in Acts chapter 4, and I hope you are uh, keeping up with the Luke Acts study guide, even though you're all uh, at home during this time. And the last few uh, verses of Acts 4 describes the community life in the early church. And we're told that no one claimed anything as their own, but shared everything they had. And what we see here is the principle of of stewardship. The principle of stewardship says that everything we have belongs to God and not to us. God has given it to us to do His will. That is, everything God has given us, He has given us to do what He wants us to do with it. And God wants us to use His money to meet the needs of people, our own and others. In fact, in Matthew 15, Jesus warns us against neglecting to meet the needs of our families, of meeting our own financial obligations under the excuse of giving to God. And so we have to meet our own obligations and the, our obligations to our family first. That's the first thing that God wants us to do with the money He has given us. John Wesley, in his sermon on the use of money, said that we should earn all we can, save all we can, and give all we can. Now, when Wesley said, earn all we can, he, of course, meant that we should uh, engage in business and that we should work hard, but that we should uh, make sure that our, our work is, is not unhealthy for us and is not uh, dishonest, it's not uh, harmful to others. And so there were certain businesses that uh, the Christian couldn't be engaged in. And of course, we all know the dangers of workaholism. Wesley warned against all that, but in in keeping with the principles of honesty and fairness and, and being healthy for ourselves, Wesley said, earn all you can, work hard, make wise investments. And then next, Wesley said, save all you can. And, and by that, he doesn't mean put it in the bank, although he does say that uh, we should be wise about uh, saving money for the future and for unforeseen circumstances. But what Wesley really means is that you shouldn't spend any more money than necessary. You shouldn't spend money on superfluous things. You shouldn't spend money on luxury things. You shouldn't spend money foolishly. And then... Once we've uh, earned all we can, once we've saved all we can, uh, we're certainly going to have money uh, that we can give away. And once we've, once we've met our obligations, uh, then we give all that we can. You see, John determined early in his life how much he needed to live on. From the time he was actually just out of college, he determined uh, how much money a year he needed to live on. And that's what he lived on for the rest of his life. And as he made more money, he gave the rest away. He said that we should use money to meet the needs of poor families, beginning with our own. In other words, we should treat ourselves as the objects of our own charity. Or, to put it this way, 
If you would not be okay with someone on welfare buying something with your money, right? We've all been in the grocery store. We've all seen somebody using um, what used to be called food stamps. It's now called uh, EBT. We've all seen, seen that, and we've all judged that, haven't we? Well, how, why are they buying that? Well, God would ask you the same question because it's not your money, it's his money. So if you would not be okay with somebody on welfare buying something with your money, maybe you should think twice before you buy it for yourself with God's money. I would encourage you to let God look not just in your checkbook, but also in your shopping cart. See, we've come to think that as long as we give God his cut, his 10% off the top, we can do whatever we want with the rest. We somehow make God out to be like, like the Godfather. He's just out for his cut. He's out for his piece of the action, which, by the way, was the best episode in the original Star Trek series. But God wants control of every decision. God wants control of every purchase. Every shopping trip, every transaction the Christian makes should bring glory to God. And if it doesn't bring glory to God, or if you would begrudge it to someone else, don't buy it for yourself. Now, of course, that does not mean that God does not want us to have fun and have nice things, he wants that for his children, just like we want that for our children. And God is glorified when we take vacations with our families. God is glorified when we have recreation and we enjoy ourselves. But it's all a matter of attitude. What do we put first? Do we put God's glory and God's purposes first? Now, in this environment of sharing in the early church, some of the believers sold their property and brought the money, that is, all of the money, to the apostles. And one of them was a man named Barnabas, whose name meant son of encouragement. A pastor I know, Shane Bishop, down in southern Illinois, said that if people are going to call you a son of something, it should be a son of encouragement. But I want you to notice something. Not everyone did this. Not everyone in the church did this, and it was not required. It was voluntary. Uh, some people were placed in the financial position that they could do this. They, they had excess property. They had other ways of meeting their financial obligations. They had other ways of caring uh, for their for their um, obligations and their families. And so they were in a position where they could do this and they did it. But it, it was not a requirement of membership in the early church. And next week we are going to see a negative example of this practice with tragic consequences. But while we're not all called and situated to... Uh, sell off all of our possessions and to, to give uh, that generously, all believers are called to be good, grateful, and generous stewards of everything God has given them. Some will be able to make large gifts. Some will only be able to make small gifts. Some will make big sacrifices and choose to do without certain things. But I want to challenge you that we should all be able to point to some worldly thing that we have given up or done without in order to be more generous givers. God has given us everything that we have to meet our needs and the needs of others. We are the stewards of everything God has given us. It is not our own. Let us pray. 
Dear God, we thank you for all the wonderful gifts you've given us. God, even in difficult times, most of us can say honestly that we are blessed beyond measure and that we have, in fact, more uh, than we really need. And God, we pray that you would make us good stewards of what you've given us. God, that you would help us to glorify you, not with a portion of what we have, but with all of it, by using it in our own lives in ways that glorify you, and then by sharing it with others in ways that glorify you. God, we offer ourselves and all that we have to you today. We pray for our church. We pray that you would bless us and help us to grow and prosper. Help us to worship and serve you in spirit and in truth and serve the world in your name. We pray for the whole body of Christ throughout the world. We pray for the persecuted church. We pray for the United Methodist Church for this annual conference and our Bishop Lori, this district, and our Superintendent Doug. We pray for our community, our nation, and our world in these troubled times. God, we pray for an end of the coronavirus pandemic. We pray for healing, and we pray for restoration for our communities and for our economy and for our churches. God, we pray for, for healing from racial tension. God, we pray for transformation and change and justice in this world. God, we pray for the men and women that serve us at home and abroad. We pray for our world leaders at every level, and we pray for ourselves, our families, our church, our community, our nation, and the whole world, the blessings of peace, justice, health, safety, freedom, stability, prosperity, and holiness. And now, God, we pray that you'd hear all of our prayers. God, as we pray with our families where we are, or as we pray silently in our hearts, God, that you would hear us in this time. Loving God, you have heard our prayers that we have spoken, and you've heard the prayers that remain silent upon our hearts. Oh God, you know our every need. And when we do not know how to pray, your Spirit intercedes for us with groanings that are too deep for words. And God, we offer you now the prayer which our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Though I sing with the tongues of men and angels and have not love and have not love Though I'm blessed with the special gift of
now I'd like to invite you to stand, if that's something that you can do where you are, and join me in professing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Receive this benediction. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, and may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go with you now and remain with you always. Let us go into the world to make disciples of Jesus Christ, experiencing grace, exploring truth, expressing love. Amen.